And welcome to Cochrane Stadium. 
on a scorching Monday Labor Day, 3 p.m. kickoff for your Bowling Green State University Falcons. Men's soccer team taking on the University of Michigan Wolverines. It's a pleasure to have you on the broadcast here today. I am Will Earhart. You've heard my voice before. I'm sure you'll hear it again. Missing my partner in crime, Stephen Jenkins, today. Uh, shout out to Stephen and his plans on this long wedding uh, Labor Day weekend. But folks, we're going to have a matchup between two teams wearing what I've got to say is one of the more aesthetically pleasing kits. You're going to see the uh, uh, the yellow and blue. What do they call that? They call that the maze and something. Apologies to the Wolverines and their kits to your left and a classic all white look from BGSU. Wolverines coming into the game today after a strong performance Friday night. A 1-1 draw at home against ninth ranked Akron. Uh, surprising result, especially considering they played the final 30 minutes, a man down. They managed to hold on for a draw and the Wolverines actually unbeaten so far this season. Folks, it's not too late to make your way to Cochran Stadium. I will tell you, if you do, bring some water, bring a fan, bring a personal shade device, because it is hot. I'm bowling Green to kick off today. And we're underway at Cochran. BGSU, a strong program that's been knocking on the door of the nation's elite for a couple years now looking to get their first statement win of the year here today. Be interesting to see how these two teams set up as the game develops. Trace Terry harrying the ball involved early. BGSU with the throw in the attacking third. Big opportunity early. Look for a big throw here from Eli Shope. We'll have more to say about Eli Shope as the broadcast goes on. Deep throw into the box. Bounces around. Just doesn't quite find the leg of a BGSU player. And Michigan able to clear. BGSU, looks like they're playing with three in the back. We'll see if that holds as the game develops. Coming together in the far sideline, nothing doing, says the referee. Michigan throw. Do want to follow up on one thing. I'm, I am aware that the other color was blue. It's maize and blue, I just thought perhaps for our, our Michigan fans that it was Mays and you know some other you know off blue name right you know Navy etc but I don't, I don't think it's Mays and Navy probably Mays and Blue maybe not even Mays oof coming together there but the referee again letting him play on like to see that early Michigan throw in the attacking third. Looks like the ball went out of play on the far sideline. Tough for us to see up here from the press box. Relatedly, any pauses here, any and he's seizing up with Mitch McConnell moments. We'll just have to blame it on the heat. We've got some, we've got a pretty intense temperature out here today. Lovely layout there from Trace Terry. Get to it. Get to it. 
Oof. Looks like the referee's giving a just giving a throw. No, it's giving a kick here, giving a free kick to BGSU. Didn't like what he saw there. Brendan Graves in goal today for the Falcons. Just been a fantastic addition to the team over the last couple of years. Even last year when some of the results didn't quite go BGSU's way, he had an exceptional season. I think was recognized for it at the end. Kakusamano on the ball there. Ooh, and I have plays the ball into space. Terry's onto it. He's got a chance. Oh. Pushes the ball wide from a tough angle, but just like that, that must have been less than 10 seconds from one end of the field to the other. Love to see that counter-attacking instinct there from the Falcons. Dangerous moment. When Trace Terry just can't find the right angle. He took off like a rocket. Or soared like a falcon, I suppose. Ooh, I could see that one from up here in the press box contesting that header. That was Alex Wagoner with the hand in the back. And BGSU winning the free kick. Josh Erlinson standing over the ball here for BGSU. Ooh. Deep ball searches out Shope and actually found him. Wasn't quite able to bring it under control. And now Michigan can counter. Well, if we have any tightly contested moments here today, friendly reminder to our viewers, no VAR here in the stadium, no VAR. We'll have to go with the call on the field. So unfortunate if you're an Arsenal fan, uh, to not have the benefit of VAR today. Ooh, tough coming together there. Nothing doing since the referee. Played into space for Eli Show. Gets his head up. Ooh. 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 That is a couple of fast-paced counter-attacking moments there from BGSU in the beginning of this game. They are just a couple of inches away already from finding the back of the net. This will be a corner kick to BGSU. Anaya with the kick. Ooh. Good header away from Taylor Dyson there. And they give it a Michigan throw. Well, we are just about seven minutes in, but it has not taken long for BGSU to create a couple of very good chances. Certainly in control early, but you know, control doesn't mean much if you don't score. Another heads up pass, looking for a through ball there. Doesn't quite come off. But boy, they are pressing. GSU comfortable in possession, working the ball around the field. Ooh, nice touch there from Shove. Just comes off. Andrew Schaefer gets his head up, picks it across all the way across the field. 
deflected out for yet another early corner here for BGSU. Can they capitalize on one of these opportunities? BGSU with an interesting position here on the kick, all in a line in the box as they all split out now. But regretfully, none of them even come close to getting to the ball first. And this time it's played out for a goal kick. Michigan playing it short here on the goal kick. Oh, BGSU winning it back pretty quickly. Brendan Grace looks up, tries to pick a pass. Just about does so to Eli Shope. Oh, can't quite bring it in. Got a stoppage here. We've got a somewhat somewhat mysterious stoppage here, folks. Not sure what exactly is happening. The referee's gone over uh, behind the behind the goal. I suppose it's plausible we're having a word with the fans over there, who certainly here from the press box look to be. Lively and enthusiastic. Ah, uh, I'm hearing rumors of a whistle, rumors of a rogue whistle, uh, which of course does does cause some problems. Looks like we're ready to continue with the Michigan throw. Michigan throw right to a BGSU player. Kyle Blasting game looking very comfortable in the middle of the park here today. Ooh. Well, folks, friendly reminder as the clock ticks down here today, we're about 10 minutes in. We do expect to see a water break halfway through this half as well as the second half, um, which is a very good idea on a day like today. We've got lots of water bottles up here in the press box, and I'd like to see the players have that same chance. Trace Terry, Trace Terry showing off in the middle. Anaya plays Shope through, just can't quite get on the end of it, but that is, a, to be frank, folks, I am losing count of how many through balls and close calls uh, we're having as BGSU tries to pick the lock with that Michigan defense. <laughs> Searching ball from the goalie. Out for a Michigan throw. BGSU putting Michigan under pressure. Very well done from Andrew Schaefer. Wins the ball back with a sliding tackle. Anaya looks up, tries the shot, gets blocked. Erlinson recovers the ball. And Michigan can break here if they go. Ooh, ooh. Now oh, Kyle Blasten game there with the momentum stopping tackle. I'll tell you what. <laughs> uh, certainly a heads up. Certainly a heads up foul. Maybe a bit lucky just to get away with that one without seeing more. Yeah, 
Michigan with the kick, but immediately out again for a BGSU throw. Quick shout out to our ball boys here today. Ball boys being provided by Bowling Green Soccer Club. Bowling Green Soccer Club, a great local option if you're looking to get your child uh, into a community soccer organization with regional travel options and really just a great uh, ethos and environment for kids to grow, learn, have fun, and play some competitive soccer. So thanks to BGSC today and to all our BGSC teams who are actually in action um, all over Northwest Ohio and Southeast Michigan. Brendan Graves come out to pick up that ball. She knows stuff. Yeah. <laughs> and BGSU once again in possession, working it around the back. Well, if I'm the Michigan fan right now, I'd like to see them just hold on to the ball for a minute or two. Already here, stringing together six or seven passes, the first time they've done that in, in quite a while. Uh, the ball goes deep, and then the second ball back over to BGSU. As this game goes on, it is going to get hotter and hotter. I mean, not actually, but... Uh, for the players as they experience an exercise, it's going to get hotter and hotter. So BGSU needs to look to capitalize on some of these opportunities that they're creating early. But, you know, this heat is not going to be a surprise to at least some members of the team. Many members growing up here locally, we've got Brendan Graves from nearby Perrysburg, Ohio. But even Eli Shope out there today, actually a proud graduate here uh, of Bowling Green local schools. Um, great community. We're looking forward to supporting those schools even further in the upcoming uh, November ballot, in which we'll uh, hopefully push forward and have a, uh, push forward an initiative to get even better high school and educational facilities for our kids here in town. Folks like Eli Shope out there on the field today um, had the privilege this summer of seeing Eli Shope's involvement in our local community, some of our town gown events. You should see the way that these BGSU Falcons, this is Eli Shope on the ball here. It's one-on-one. -on -one. He fires a shot. My goodness, Eli Shope, speak of the devil. Proud BGHS graduate. Almost puts the Falcons ahead. What a quick attack that was. Well, as I was just, just noting, so many great events over the summer, but to involve this men's program uh, as well as community kids, BGSC and others. Uh, Eli Shope, known for a number of his comical dances, uh, had the kids going nuts. BGSU with the same interesting corner kick lineup here. S whew, still not quite finding any success with that, but here we are with yet another corner kick. Again, I have lost track. I don't know what number we're on. Fourth, tenth, I believe anything. Probably fourth. Anaya once again standing over the ball. Ooh, Eli Shope lines it up, but again blocked. So many fantastic latch just tackles here from the Wolverines. Play deep. Ooh, bobbled but eventually brought in by Hayden Evans there at the University of Michigan. Ooh, Kyle Blassingham wins the header, gets fouled, and still pops up. No call from the referee there.
Ooh, Trace Terry in takes the header in stride. Ooh, well, bit of a gift there from the referee, I'll tell you that. You've seen it given, but always incorrectly. Um, looks like the referee has instructed Trace Terry either to sit or to stop talking. Do not envy the referees today. They have to wear the darkest and most clothing out there in this heat. Josh Erlinson cleaning up at the header there. And a Kyle Blassen game and Alberto and I seem to know exactly where the other is at all times in the field here. Flag is up on the far side, yep. Bringing this one back, Trace Terry had just drifted into an offside position. Well, Trace Terry, Eli Shope, absolute menaces so far here today. Both having some chances, just can't quite find the back of the net. Does seem a matter of when, not if. But we've seen that before. BGSU takes the throw quickly back in possession. Crossfield ball that was. Yep. Playing Andrew Schaefer into space, can't quite get on the end of it, but my goodness, that was absolutely pinged across the field. Remis re reminiscent of Joey Apanunu, who's uh, no longer here at BGSU, part of the MLS Super Draft last year. Might have got that term wrong, apologies, but drafted by FC Cincinnati. Dangerous ball out of the box by Anaya, but just a bit too far. Well, anyway, that crossfield ball, cross ball by Montez Silva was phenomenal. Pinged with pace. BGSU pinning Michigan back here. Christensen winning the ball, not losing it right away. Ooh, Michigan with the chance to counter quickly here. Ooh, well, Monta Silva not happy with that call. Certainly won the ball, certainly used his body. Not too surprised to see that one called. Well, looking around Cochrane Stadium today, a lot of orange, but, well, you know, a lot of blue. Michigan fans traveling well here today. Certainly we've got contingent, contingent both here in town and nearby communities like Toledo. Ball played into space. Michigan looking to get the ball in. Ooh. Referee decides more of a stumble than a push there. Out for a Michigan throw. Well, I was about to say this is exactly what Michigan needs, a moment to just possess the ball, slow things down. But instead, they play a long, loose possession. And here's our first water break, as promised. Halfway through the first half. I am more than halfway through my water allotment up here in the press box, so I'm going to have to pace myself. 
Hopefully you're hydrating at home as well, even if you're in the comfort of your own home. Hydration is so important to a healthy lifestyle. We'll take a quick break and we'll be back here in just a minute. This water breaks over. I'm gonna need, I'm already like one and a half deep. I'll need another one. <laughs> thank you. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Thank you. And folks, we are just about ready to resume. Couple minutes there for a water break. Again, it is 90 degrees here in Bowling Green. I did not check that number, but it is surely at least 90. And you know that that sun reflects off the grass and makes it even hotter, I'm told. Ooh, could have been a disaster. Instead, it's just a little bit of an embarrassment there for the Michigan goalie. BGSU in possession once again. Schaefer out here to Anaya. Now can Michigan hold the ball for just a moment? Settle the game. Ooh. Well, we had a lovely, lovely break from Al Sanami there. Streaking by a couple of BG Falcons looking to change the tempo of the game. And I think they're right at the end. We've picked up a yellow card for someone on the Falcons. I'm not sure who. I think it might have been Alberto Anaya just based on how close he was to the referee. Fantastic news from the press box as well. We do have water delivered now. Plenty of water up here in this heat. A little bit of our own water break as I finish my second bottle of the game. Well, this stoppage is also a good moment to remind all our listeners and really anyone in this region, this upcoming weekend, exciting time the community of Bowling Green, it's of course the Black Swamp Arts Festival, free to the public, September 8, 9, and 10. Uh, live music on Friday and Saturday night. Arts, booths, crafts, events, community, camaraderie, all throughout. 
can go online to blackswampfest.org and check out additional details about that event. But it's one of the premier arts festivals in Ohio, nay, the Midwest. I look forward to seeing you all there. And, of course, it's also Alumni Weekend. Uh, so these Falcons will be back here in action on Friday night, as well as a variety of other alumni-related activities. Um, one of the best weekends to be in Bowling Green. Hope you'll take the chance to uh, come see us this upcoming weekend. Well, that water break's been a bit of a break in the game as well. Pretty disjointed ever since the restart. Michigan with a long kick that went nowhere. Which could probably describe their approach to the game thus far. BGSU now will be in possession and looking to score, but not yet able to do so. The story of their game so far. We are 25 minutes in, 20 to go. With BGSU still looking to make the breakthrough. Certainly the more likely of the two teams to score. Again, as this heat continues to shine, I suppose it's the sun that shines. The heat is the mere byproduct. It is going to get tougher and tougher to keep levels up. Legs will tire, and really anything can happen. So if Michigan should be happy to hold this score. As the game goes on, who knows? But this is Trace Terry taking off down the far side. He looks a menace this year. Looks like we're going to see our first substitution of the match. Mads Christensen coming off in favor of Anthony Hernandez, number 22 for BGSU. 5'7", freshman out of Pickerington, Ohio. Pickerington, a community I've never been to, but one day might. Blasting game in the middle, so composed. Comfortable on the ball. Erlinson tries his luck deep. Ooh. Well done. Kyle Kusamana cleaning up and yeah, that was an easy one. Ooh, got a bit of a bit of a bit of a fracas. Boys putting on their big boy pants after this one. That was a pretty obvious foul. As Anaya was taken down just outside the box. This is going to be about 20 yards out from goal. Eli Shope immediately on the scene. Letting Riley Furch know what he thought about that. So that's 29 Riley Furch of Michigan being booked. And let's see what BGSU does here. Our dead ball specialist, Alberto Anaya, standing over the ball. But Taylor Dyson also standing over the ball. We'll see what they choose to do. This is certainly within Anaya's range. We've seen it ever since he joined the Falcons. He's scored his fair share of dead balls. You could cut the tension in the stadium with a knife or even something much duller given the heat. Two-man wall here, ordered from Hayden Evans. Looks like it's Anaya over the ball. You've got to think he wants to pick out that near post. Oh, he plays, oh my. My goodness. Oh, I couldn't be happier to be wrong. Number two, Kyle Cusimano with a diving header from a inch perfect pass from Alberto Anaya. You can hear Cochran Stadium in the background going bananas that could not have been executed better. Delivery from Anaya into that free space just north of the six. Kyle Cusimano unmarked, onside. Diving header, Hayden Evans with no chance. 
for Michigan. That is exactly what the doctor ordered for BGSU. Worthy reward for a first half of domination. And we've got the flag runner here in Cochrane going. That beautiful brown and orange flag, that classic color combination, we're also fond of. And just like that, BGSU up one nothing, And we go again. Kyle Cusimano playing in a new position this year at left back. I will tell you, I have been incredibly impressed so far with how he's performed. And just because he's moved a little bit further back in the field doesn't mean he can't still be in and around the goals. That's what a finish that was. You won't see much better. Well, Michigan now with their own spell of possession out for a Michigan throw. Well, Michigan trying to work down that far side of the field they certainly look more dangerous down the left. And here they work it over to the right and see if they can come again on this side. This is Nolan Miller in possession moving about halfway up the field. Good pressure from BGSU. Referees let this one play on. Good advantage there from the referee. The passage of play ends, but BGSU does win the ball back. Well, just like that, responding to the goal, Michigan with their best sequence of play in the whole game. We got a couple more substitutions incoming. For Michigan, it's Michael Leone on. I missed the other. We'll get that to you here in a second. I think it's Zhao Hamas on for Michigan. Apologies if that Portuguese pronunciation was a bit off. I do believe we say the hard J in Portuguese. But always a bit of a crapshoot. Jose Mourinho, for example, Portuguese, or João Matinho. Just some famous soccer players I know off the top of my head. BGSU, a quick counter. Eli Shope looks to be off, but oh, that was close. Oh, I'll tell you what, Eli Shope came to play today. Oh, that's a, okay. Well, I'm sure viewers saw that on your screen. I'm going to let you judge for yourselves what you think of that. The referee has stopped the clock. He's asking both players to come over. He's having a talking to. He's reiterating that what just happened, maybe don't do it again, probably inappropriate. He's saying he's not happy. He's describing the degree to which he's not happy. And now he's, and now Eli Shope has, has made the, the classic, point at his eyes and then point at the other person's eyes. You love to see that. Another conversation with the opposing goalie. Point into his head. And we've moved on. Well, I think, I think the point was made there. I think everyone understands that what just happened, unacceptable, can't happen again. No cards flowing either way. And we're going to start the clock again. 15 minutes left here in the first half at Cochran Stadium. one nothing to your Bowling Green State University Falcons. I would describe this so far as comfortable, except that it's so hot that surely no one's too comfortable out here. Another free kick. I missed. I missed that one. But Michigan here in possession, looking to find a foothold here in the game.
Kusumana winning possession. Plays it to Shope. Can he get in? Lovely give and go. Shope at the back post. Oh, just too far. Lovely passage of play there from BGSU. One touch passing, crisp, clean. The ball comes in just out of reach of any Falcon in the area. But another moment that BGSU finds some joy in the final third. Well, neither team really going into their bench here despite the heat. Just a couple of subs on both sides. Eli Shope with the long throw into the box. Referee judges a foul to have occurred. And it'll be another Michigan kick. Long kick from Hayden Evans. That's one of the first times we've seen Michigan win the second ball, and it immediately creates a chance at the other end. My goodness. What a chance that was for the Wolverines. Ball bounces around, but Michigan manages to win the second and third ball, immediately creates a chance going the other direction for number seven, Alex Wagoner, who puts the ball not to either side of Brendan Grace, but over and out of play for a goal kick. But just like that, it can be that quick. It doesn't matter who's dominated the game. That could be 1-1. Oof. Right no doubt there, Matthew Fisher clattering into the back of Eli Shope. Winning the kick and BGSU will once again have the ball here in the middle third of the park. And Josh Erlinson standing over it. The number of times today I've almost said Jake Erlinson. And by the time I'm ready to stop making that mistake, Josh will have graduated as well. Good battle there on the left. Michigan ultimately winning the throw. Ooh. Kyle Cusimano ultimately winning that ball. Ball goes long to Eli Shope, and he's in if he gets the right touch. Ooh, almost. Well, I'll tell you what, this, this referee is not a fan of Eli Shope, I think it's fair to say at this point. That's a, that's a few times he's picked him out for some questionable uh, no calls. I think we're going to stop, stop play here for uh, number four, Nolan Miller, staying on the ground. It is hot. They are under pressure. I understand the urge to stay down. Eli Shope, a bit unfortunate to be penalized there. But BGSU has to be pretty happy with how this game has gone so far. Lots of chances created. They've managed to capitalize on one. They'd like to see a few more go in the back of the net. Ultimately, it's another Michigan kick. We'll get the stats for you at halftime. Fair number of free kicks given here in this first half. A lot of stoppages of play, but given the heat, I'm not sure any of the players are complaining. So much sprint jog walking during the soccer game, and the more walking they can get, the cooler they'll be. Michigan attacking again down this left. I think if, if something happens, something happens for Michigan today, I think I think it's going to come from that left hand side. Another free kick given here to Michigan. 
Again, they're looking down that left. Not quite coming off. <laughs> BG throw. There's some gesticulating from the bench. Can't quite see from here whether it's a good call. One presumes that it was. Anaya looks to play his plate. My goodness, he's fast. So a moment ago, that was number 19, Daniel Sareso, who just, I don't know if he burst off the screen, certainly in person, that he is speedy. Couldn't quite get to it. Let's play developed. We ended up with a Michigan kick over here. There's a certain amount of physicality that the Wolverines do not seem to be able to cope with here from BG. And that is a lovely through ball from Shope. Oh, Anaya's first touch just doesn't do him a favor. He's able to control it, though. Shope looking for a different run from Schaefer there. It's just about the first time I feel like they haven't been on the same page today. Long throw from Shope, finds Anaya. Doesn't quite come to anything. This is 1v1 if he wants it. Alex Wagoner for Michigan. Takes it left. Doesn't quite find it. Danger has not quite gone. Acres of space for number 22. Michael Leon there on the far side, but can't quite find it. He was not far away. Taylor Dyson getting a well-deserved breather here for BGSU. Just under eight ticks left here in the first half. Certainly since the restart for the water break, Michigan has improved. Some combination of Michigan has improved and Michigan has been awarded a significant number of free kicks and has broken up BGSE's play. Anaya once again not hesitating to search out a long ball. That one doesn't quite come off, but it wasn't far away. Seven minutes left, BGSU will be looking. Can they double that lead before the half? Mr. gonna be wondering if they can pull one back. Down two nothing in this heat in the second half would be a tall order for Michigan, but all it takes is one moment like that. But Brendan Graves, alert to the danger, far out of his goal, clearing the ball well. Clearing the ball so well that in fact he caught his own play at an offside position there. Blasting game with another another foul and I'll tell you what, I think the referee is communicating to him despite his noted refusal to pay attention. I think he's communicated that might be it for Kyle Blasting game. I think next foul might be a card. We'll see how that develops. Certainly there's been a few. The old repetitive fouling yellow card. Your Casimiro's of the world. Oh, that's harsh. I'll tell you, that's 
That is a that is a harsh foul called on Daniel Sereso, and I, uh, I I'm wondering if he's actually shown a card here. I he I, I think he called for the clock to be stopped. That would be, by my count, his first or second foul. That's an interesting one to give as a yellow. I didn't even know if, I don't, I didn't see a card produced though. It, I, I, a little bit of confusion in the press box because he did stop the clock, which will presumably resume on the restart here. Well, we'll follow up on that one. Would have been an interesting, would have been an interesting yellow card if it was given. I think we've seen quite a few comings together here, a little bit worse. Interesting question about the proper pluralization of coming together. As Michigan's in a dangerous spot there, my goodness. Takes a deflection and... Well, referee has stopped play again. There's some confusion as to what's happening. Maybe there was an advantage being played. I don't have the benefit of tape going back to know what exactly happened. Uh, there is a, we're going to drop the ball. There's a drop ball scenario. That, that, common, that common trope in a soccer game, the drop ball when play is called back. That was one of the more a controversial moment of Michigan scores off whatever that was. Uh, but fortunately, BGSU able to clear. Again, I do not know what just happened. Uh, apologies for that, but no harm, no foul. Well, I guess there was a foul of some type, but so no harm, some, some foul. I do want to follow up on that coming together point. I do think it's comings together, similar to attorneys general. Uh, we'll be interested in feedback from listeners as to whether that's correct. But Cummings together feels more correct. Eli Shope with the cheeky backpatch. Andrew Schaefer was through and, and pretty clearly held back, but not, not called there. BGSU again and wins the ball back. Looking to get forward. Ball popping around there in the final third for Michigan. Now Kyle Blasting game settles it down, looks around, let's see. Plays it out into space. You'd expect a teammate to be there. There was not quite in that moment. Daniel Cerezo had just pinched his run inside. Got it. Thank you. And it's another Michigan throw. Just about three minutes left here in the first half. Sun is behind some clouds right now. Everyone feeling a little bit of relief especially the Cochran faithful out here in the bleachers, in the sun. Michigan has created a few chances, but otherwise just not able to get anything going consistently. BGSU really in control. One nothing, not quite reflecting the number of chances they've created. Oh, lovely give and go. We're going to see a ball into the box. Shope is there, lays it off. Oh, Cerezo can't quite find the end of it. There's a, another, great def, uh, another great block from Michigan in the box. They can break here. It is 3v2. Lays it out wide. Still attacking, oh, important catch there from Kusumano. Danger not quite over, but and Kusumano clears. Good counter there from Michigan, pressing the ball up the field, asking questions, but BGSU able to come up with the answers. Michigan dancing around the box here. Got to be careful. Got to be careful. Don't think we're going to see that given. Given a, given a corner there, yeah. Certainly very good job there from the Michigan attacker asking questions of the BGSU defenders. Just 
tempting them to dangle a leg. And uh, eventually they bit. They did slide in, but referee judges it not to be a penalty. Dangerous ball in. Oh, but Brendan Graves, of course, on the end of it. One minute remaining here in the first half. Really a tale of two halves in this first half, which I suppose would make it a tale of two quarters. Uh, all BGSU to open the game, um, culminating in that lovely goal from Kyle Cusimano on a free kick from Otto Nile. Eli Shop is in. It is 1v1, and he has put it wide. Eli Shope is looking more and more dangerous. He is in the mood. I can't quite find the back of the net. Boy, that would have been a great, a great little bump going into the halftime intermission. And again, just concluding those thoughts here. After the water break, it's been a little bit more disjointed. A lot of breaks in the action for free kicks. You can see there's tired legs uh, in this heat. BGSU up one nothing here at the half. And I think unfortunate not to be up more. Looking forward to another half uh, here in this heat. And we'll be back with you for the second half here in just a few minutes. Folks, we are back for the second half here at Cochrane Stadium. Your Bowling Green State University Falcons taking on the University of Michigan Wolverines. It is a scorcher here today. It is 90 degrees. We have moved on from the pure life up here in the press box onto the Dasani. It is getting serious with the water consumption. The players have had a water break. We had a water break in the first half. We'll have another here in the second. BGSU waltzing into the second half with a one nothing lead. Really a one nothing lead that doesn't do justice to that first half performance. Plenty of chances created, most notably Eli Shope right at the death, just pushing the ball wide of the goal. We're looking to improve on that performance, but can't let levels drop here in the heat. We saw Michigan on a few occasions. They did create chances. They, they were not able to establish patterns of play and get a foothold in that first half, but they did create a few chances and had one or two of them gone the other way. Could be a very different story here today. Series of Michigan throws here on the far side of the field.
Well, this half we'll see Michigan attacking from right to left on your screen, which means we will get a first-hand look down the left here at a player I'm excited to watch, number 26, Mushtaba Al-Hanasi. Played really well against Akron the other night, and in the first half was responsible for one or two moments of, of real flair and brilliance that we'll see if he can do again for Michigan here in the second half. They've got to find someone to provide that spark. It was the BGSU left back, Kyle Kusamano, who got on the end of that beautiful cross from Alberto Anaya in the first half to give BGSU the lead. We'll have to see if the Michigan left back can do the same. Offside again here. Not sure if it was Trace Terry or Eli Schott, but it's happened a few times here. Well, Brendan Graves clearing from deep, and BGSU attackers caught in an offside position as they immediately begin to press. Oh, look at that, just right off the bat. Moment of quality down the left here. Just have a feeling. Al Hasnawi might be at the center of something good, but Eli Shope is through. Eli Shope, it is 1v1 again. He cuts it back. Oh, he just, he's just missing that end product. He did ever so well to get in an attacking position. Fluffs his lines just at the end. Michigan cannot afford to give up too many of those chances. Great work from Eli Shope to get into a dangerous position. You've got to... Got to get that final product. There's Christensen on the ball here for BGSU. Out to Dyson, back to Christensen. BGSU so good at holding on to the ball so far here today. Finding space around the field, moving the ball around, and just like that, Dyson free on the right here. Has a look. Terry over to Shope, Anaya, one more pass over to Schaefer, can he get there? Ooh, ooh, judged to have gone out of play. That ball from Anaya asking a little bit too much from Schaefer. My goodness, you can see in that little passage of play there, PGSU, all those, player, all those players on the same page, all thinking on the same wavelength. And we are, this is a 2v1. This is 1v1 with Brendan Graves, who, wow. Well, folks, I think we're in for a good second half. That was Herrera for Michigan. 1v1 clear on goal. It can't fault him for the shot, but hits it right at Brendan Graves. So does Eli Shope one better, who didn't quite manage to even get a shot off, but oh, he'll be disappointed with that finish. We are just, we're less than five minutes in. We've already had 1v1 chances at both ends with Brendan Graves here for BGSU coming up big. Did ever so well to be in the right spot, make himself big, get down, get low. Stop that shot. Well, well, well. We might have a game on our, on our hands here or our feet on anything. A ball goes out of play for a BGSU goal kick. sure whether this is intended or not on these these long kicks from BGSU like that goal kick that they just had three players in a high line with a big gap in the midfield they play it long to one of those attackers and I think they're banking on those midfielders then streaming forward and winning that second ball with momentum didn't quite come off there but if it does you could see a real chance created off one of those goal kicks something to watch here in the second half if Michigan continues to press and generate opportunities that 
result in goal kicks for BTSU. That is another long ball. That was, that was as good a ball as you'll see. And just like that, Michael Leon for Michigan. Hayden Evans with about as good a pass as you're gonna see. That ball, that pass traveled 60 yards on a line, on a laser. And that time, you saw Brendan Graves get caught in two minds as he started to come forward. Then he backtracked, caught a no man's land by that incredible pass from his counterpart, Hayden Evans. Again, that was, that was Andre Onana pinging the ball, creating a chance. And just like that, we have ourselves a game this afternoon at Cochrane Stadium, 1-1 between Michigan and BGSU. So much time left. But BGSU has got to start capitalizing on some of these chances, and they have got to shore things up in the back. That is two 1v1s in seven minutes for Michigan. That's not a winning formula as this game goes on. Let's see how the Falcons respond. Let's see if, what effect that goal has on Michigan. Does it help them settle down, help them get control? Or you know what, does it help Hayden Evans say, hey, you know what, it worked once. Maybe it'll work again. Well done for Manaya there. Settling things down here from the Falcons. They've done so well controlling the tempo here today. Ooh, Eli Shope trying to pick out Anaya there. Doesn't quite happen and Michigan can counter. Spell the possession here for Michigan. Thank you. Bowling green sixteen for Eagles. Oof, lovely touch there. It doesn't quite come off. offside, but that was close. Kyle Blassing game. Stepping in for a timely clearance. Going to have a substitution here for the Falcons. Jake Lane coming onto the field. For Andrew Schaefer. Well deserved breather. Let's see what Jake Lane can do out here. There is a certain amount of midfield control that has just left the stadium for BGSU. Michigan is getting a lot of quick counter-attacking movements in which they have space to run into. And they earn themselves a quarter here.
Ball comes in. Lovely touch. Brenda Graves does well. Michigan got a couple bites at the apple there. I think we might have a... We've got a got a head uh, head injury. And the referee stopped the clock. He's examining the net. Appears to still be a net, so all in good shape. I think that's number six. Taylor Dyson will get some some treatment here. Make sure all is. In order. and looks like he'll be able to continue here in just a moment. We'll wait for the referee to instruct him back onto the field after a drop ball here to resume play. After Brendan Graves had previously secured the ball from that Michigan corner kick. Michigan looking so dangerous here in the second half. Certainly a tale of two halves. Whatever adjustments they've made, they are working. Fans upset here in the stadium after what looked to be a handball from Michigan, ultimately resulting in uh, Anaya judged to have fouled his opponent. Well, Montez Silva wins the header over a shorter opponent, and uh, well. Only in soccer, only in soccer can you win a header and be given a yellow card, but there you go. Montez Silver there for BGSU, winning the header, but also earning himself a yellow card. Referee is writing the number into his book a couple times perhaps, or maybe his pen is drying out, but he's finished his work and now the free kick will commence. Two players standing over the ball for Michigan. That's Eli Shope. Judge to have handled the ball there. Stark contrast to other end of the field when there was ball to hand, but no call. But here the call is given. Dangerous spot here for Michigan. He's about um, certainly less than 25 yards out. That's the captain. I think it's number 11, Bryce Blevins, sending over the ball. This is the perfect spot. If you fancy a free kick, Brendan Graves has set up his wall, positioned slightly off center to the left of his goal. Ooh. Blevins puts it in, can't quite find that far corner. It was dipping, it wasn't far away. Amer Didich, number four for BGSU, coming on to replace Montel Silva, who just recently won a header and then received a yellow. Again, BGSU sticking with this 3-5-2. Three defenders across the back. And then I'll tell you what, they're really lined up as a 3-4-3 when I look at them standing up. Certainly three across the back, and Anaya's really floating in between the lines as an attacking midfielder. Almost an auxiliary forward. 
And there he is on the ball. Oh, lovely one touch on. Shope is in here. He puts it. My goodness. Eli Shope has done everything but score here today. Brilliant ball through from Alberto Anaya, who plays Eli Shope in just on side. Gets a 1v1 with the goalie. Loops it over his head, but just goes agonizingly wide again. Can't find the back of the net. Surely one of these will go in. Trace Terry harrying the Michigan defenders. BGSU with the high press here. Well done from Dietrich there. Good positioning. You could see up here from the Prex box, he was very aware to the danger posed by Michael Leone, our goal scorer here today. He's done ever so well here in this second half. Ooh, Taylor Dyson wins the ball. What can he make of it here? Trace Terry to his right, gets the ball, puts, tries to put the ball in, wins a corner. Another corner for BGSU. This will be our fifth corner kick of the game. I believe earlier I speculated we'd had as many as nine. That was clearly an exaggeration. But it sure felt that way. Anaya standing over the ball. Bowling Green lined up again in a line. Let's see how they split away. Ooh, ball bounces down dangerously. Able to clear, though, from Michigan. Anaya puts the ball in again. Trace Terry certainly does. Put a hand on the Michigan defender there. Well, it'll be a free kick to Michigan here. Just over 30 minutes left here at Cochran Stadium. It's hot. The fans are restless. They're looking for a goal. You can see the players, the heat starting to affect them a little bit. Some of, those, some of the players out here have played just about every minute. It is tough to play in this heat. We'll see how both coaches manage substitutions over the final 30 minutes. BGSU about to make another substitution here shortly. In a moment, we'll see Anthony Hernandez come on for Match Christensen for BGSU. Well done from Chase Terry there. Wins the ball. Ooh, Kyle Blassing game just loses control there in the middle. Referee has stopped play again. Tough to, tough to find a rhythm in this game today. A lot of, a lot of whistles, a lot of stoppages. Referee giving instructions on the drop ball to go to Michigan here. Peter's doing well so far. Just haven't come on a few minutes ago. But Michigan has really grown into this game. This, this second half has certainly been stronger for Michigan. BGSU with a couple of chances, but Michigan just has done night and day from the first half. As they attack here, finds that far post, Brendan Graves. Brendan Graves does well, so strong in the air. Uh, able to grab that ball and hold on even as he's clattered. Doesn't seem to phase him at all.
Brendan Gray is one of our local Northwest Ohio uh, products here on this team. Done so well since he took over. And speaking of local Northwest Ohio products, don't forget this weekend, Black Swamp Arts Festival, free to the public, September 8, 9, and 10, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Crafts, arts, all sorts of things going on during the day, fun for the whole family, uh, music, food, going late into the night, Friday and Saturday night. Uh, it's a blast. If you've never been, I encourage all of you to come out uh, to the Black Swamp Arts Festival this weekend. Check out more information at blackswampfest.org. And of course, it's also Alumni Weekend here at BGSU. All sorts of activities, too many to list, but perhaps most notably for our purposes, your BGSU men's soccer Falcons will be in action again this weekend at home on Friday night. It's a good tackle there from Michigan, but that, that final ball goes nowhere and BGSU back in possession. Referee stopped play. Bit of, bit, of a, bit of a mystery there. Referee let the play develop so there could be another contested 50-50 ball before judging that the prior contested 50-50 ball featured a, a foul. Hayden Evans looks deep again. That is working here in the second half. That's got to be intentional versus the first half. Tactical tweak from Michigan. It is working. It's already created one goal and a few other chances as well. Got to expect we'll keep seeing it. Trace Terry does well to win a throw there for BGSU. Referee has judged that Trace Terry committed a foul throw. Ooh, in again. Well, Brendan Graves off his line to get that one. There was certainly some tussling between the Michigan and BGSU player there. Uh, just this side of fair play and nothing given. Uh, Brendan Graves able to scoop that up. But again, ball over the top, giving BGSU a lot of problems here in the second half. Dietrich picking out a crossfield ball. Shope does find the end of it. Cusimano tries his lot crossfield. Looking for Trace Terry in the middle. Nothing doing. Well, listeners, I don't, or viewers and listeners, I don't want to shock you, but that was another ball over the top from Michigan. And again, it worked. Oh, that's just a lovely touch from Blevins on Michigan. He's trying to find the angle to take the shot. Can't quite find it, lays it off to a teammate. Michigan looking ever so dangerous here in the second half. EGSU does well to push Michigan back as Cochran Stadium applauds. Expect to see a water break here at the next stoppage of play as we tick down towards the midway point here in the second half. Ooh, 
Ooh, lovely forward pass. Now Trace Terry on the ball. Tries to find Shope. He does find him. What's he going to do here? Early shot. My goodness. My goodness. Eli Shope with the finish we've all been waiting for. What a goal that was. And I, I, can't, I can't recall who that was with the pass from deep. Splits one line of defense. Trace Terry takes turns. Splits the other line with that forward pass just off to the right to Eli Shope. And Eli Shope this time. You know what? He's missed left. He's missed right. He's dribbled. He's tried to take on defenders. That time he doesn't hesitate. First time shot. Picks out that far corner. Kisses off the post. Eli Shope, he is him today. Well deserved goal for his performance. And that is going to take us into the water break. The perfect time for BGSU to have set the tempo. That's They're going to have to take a quick breather, get some water, talk about those balls over the top because Michigan uh, has been a different team in this second half and they have found joy time and time again trying to play balls, early balls, quick balls, over the top, searching out some speedy Michigan attackers. We will see what happens here. We're taking a quick break and we'll be back when this water break is back. We are just about ready to get back to action after our water break here in the second half. What a moment to have a water break. Could revel in that goal again. Just, just an incredible pass to start the move. Trace Terry then using both of his first names to thread that ball to Eli Shope, who does not hesitate in the first time finish. And we will see what happens here over the final 23 minutes. Can BG hold on? Can they add to their lead? Eli Shope, feeling the moment, takes on one, can't beat the second. Goodness me. Hayden Evans choosing to play it out of the back there for Michigan, playing it short. Results ultimately in a BGSU throw. The substitution here, Christensen back on, Kyle Blassengame taking a well-deserved break. Again, we'll see how coaches manage subs over these final 20 plus minutes. It is hot and a lot of these players have been out there the whole time. Thank you. Ooh, ooh, that's high. Well, Alberto Anayo pr pr pretty clearly fouled there in the center of the park, but nothing given. He may have already reached his allotment of fouls to call, I'm not sure. 
We'll see how the rest of the 20 minutes goes. So much more comfortable in possession in this second half from Michigan. It looks like they have ideas. In the first half, they were really just asking questions. All played there. Out for a BGSU throw. Another substitution coming on for BGSU. Taylor Dyson coming off. Andrew Schaefer coming back on. Looks like Schaefer will play down the right hand side here. We saw him positioned a little more to the left in the first half. Had some good interactions with Shope. And look at that, he picks out Shope again. They don't have to be on the same side. Whoa. Well, they've called Shope offside. Viewers, I am telling you it was close. Very difficult to call in real time. He looked to be on, but I'm not, I'm not quite along the line. Either way, Schaefer immediately picking out Shope. Ooh, see, we've taken, took a delayed call there, but we actually had at least three people down, which was notable. That means we have yet another stoppage. Clock is stopped as we await further instruction. It looks like the result is a Michigan free kick. Again, you can cut, copy, and paste for much of this game. It's Blevin standing over the ball. Good performance in the second half from him. So close to scoring. Dangerous on a few occasions. Dangerous ball into the box, but Brendan Graves rises tallest. Such an advantage that a goalie can use their hands. Able to secure that. Jake Lane battling on the far side, not quite able to win out. Well, Josh Erlinson has been called for a foul there. A little bit of a coming together. It's, uh, and uh, the referee, uh, this is, this is going to be a surprise to our viewers, but he has stopped the clock uh, for another, another player on the ground. And having a talking to, and looks like this is going to be a card. In interesting choices today. You know, you've, you've seen them given, but usually wrongly. So uh, interesting card here for Josh Erlinson. Felt a bit more like a good faith coming together, but we move on. And we've got Alex Wagoner back onto the field for Michigan. Wagoner looked dangerous in the first half at a couple of chances. Just wasn't quite able to convert. And we've got Trace Terry taking a breather as well. Daniel Cereso coming on to replace him. Trace Terry with the assist on Eli Shope's goal. Got some well-earned rest. 18.56 left to play. Clock will once again restart on the kick.
Well, one from Didej, and Hernandez is trying to pick out Zareso there. And, uh, well, it's really not clear. Very, very difficult to tell what's being called and what's not here today. So Zareso bumped in the back, not called, and then, of course, uh, a judge to have fouled the Michigan player for a bump in the back. I suppose it's the severity of the bump in the back, or it could also be the perhaps the, the part of the back that's fouled. It's not, it's not clear from the press box what the defining line is today. Brendan Gray is coming literally as far as he can to use his hands out there. He is actually allowed to go elsewhere in the field, but to use his hands, he's right in the corner there. Lovely turn there from Wagoner for Michigan. Michigan again getting into the box, again getting the ball in. Doesn't find the Michigan player on the end, but that ball can pinball anywhere. Looks like Taylor Dyson has had enough of a breather. He's about to come back on for Jake Lane. At our next stoppage. Just there, I think you could see the fatigue in both players. Neither, neither the Falcon nor the Wolverine contesting that ball in the air, but letting it fall to the ground. I think that's an example of the heat fatigue setting in. There are 16 and a half minutes left, and they are going to be 16 and a half tough minutes for both teams. It is hot. Michigan with a corner, their third of the game here. Dangerous ball, my goodness, not cleared. That could have gone anywhere. It looks like that was cleared off the line on the post. Can't tell you who it was other than I'm you know, reasonably confident it was a Falcon. And here's that substitution. Dyson on for Jake Lane. Hernandez looking for the early ball to Shope there. It doesn't quite come off. Wasn't far away. Good defending there from BGSU. Still results in a Michigan throw. Confident passing out of the back for Michigan here. Stray pass leads to BGSU possession. Christensen now on the ball. Let's see if BG can just hold the ball for a minute. Have a little bit of a spell of possession. Lovely one touch passing leads to Anaya in a dangerous spot. Middle of the field looks up. 
He's got Cerezo and Dyson out, but it's Cerezo in the middle. Looks, ooh, looks for Shope to continue his run. Doesn't do so. Nice buildup leading up to that moment, but that final, that final pass, not there. A Wagoner there coming from an offside position, not, not spotted by the official in real time. Cleared well by BGSU there. Would have been a few questions if that attack resulted in a goal. Again, no benefit of VAR here at Cochrane Stadium, that type of technology not yet installed here. I'm sure, it's just a matter of time. Daniel Cereso does a lot of work to chase him down. We commented in the first half, we noted how speedy he is. His burst is notable. Good win from Didich. See a, see a card here, one of the more predictable cards you'll ever see for uh, a captain. But you know, tell you what, you you like to see uh, the uh, the professionalism of that foul. Certainly, it was intended. Stepped over, knew he was going to take a yellow, and took it well. well no worries there. Looks like we'll end up with uh, 11 and a half minutes left. BGSU free kick. They're going to have to keep their tempers in check. And I'll tell you what, speaking from experience, boy, is it hard to keep your emotions in check when it's hot. You know when it's hot, it can be hard to keep cool. And uh, these players are going to have to battle that over these final 11 minutes and 37 seconds. Because tempers are starting to flare. Things are heating up on the field as the sun mercilessly beats down. BGSU protecting a one goal lead. Anaya in acres of space, able just to casually walk up, delivers a delicious ball to the back post, just a little bit too far for any Falcon. No one at the end of that. I'll tell you folks, the substitutions are coming fast and furious. Kyle Blassengame came back into the field just a moment ago and I missed it. Trace Terry now back on the field for Eli Shope. Trace Terry does well, tracking back, winning the ball. Keeping his composure and finding Dyson out wide. Really nice there from Trace Terry. Anthony Hernandez with extended minutes today, doing very well playing in the middle. I think it was Hernandez who hit that initial pass to Terry before it went to show for the goal, but here's Dyson out right. Great position, hits the ball in just a little bit too much. Too much mustard on that. That, that needed a yellow mustard and it was more of a Dijon. Oh 
And this is the goal scorer, Michael Leon, down the right now for Michigan, back onto the field and attacking from the right-hand side of the field. This ball has worked out left. Looks like it was a dangerous position just for a moment. Kyle Blassengame clears, but only as far as a Michigan midfielder. He is there, he is open, and my goodness, that was close. Kyle Blassengame again has been doing an awful lot of cleanup duty here. Well done from Hernandez, sliding tackle, and BGSU can break. Oh, look at those tired legs. You can tell they've been out there in this heat. Given a throw to Michigan there. No complaints from Sarasso, so. Given there. Number 26, Al Sanawi, judged to have uh, uh, fouled one of the BGSU Falcons. That's uh, Erlinson standing over the ball. Just over eight minutes to play. Both teams trying to manage both the opponent and the Heat. Hernandez absolutely clatters into a Michigan player. Referee plays on, plays the advantage. This is Leon outright. Looking to find space, can't quite find it. Well done from Cusimano there to shut it down. Referee, referee has, has stopped the clock and has brandished a yellow for Anthony Hernandez. I'll tell you, can't have too many complaints there. Um, certainly, I missed the, I think it was number 16, uh, Murphy Parker for Michigan, certainly clattered into him there in the middle of the park. So uh, no surprises to see a yellow on that. Good advantage there from the referee. As Michael Leon found himself in a dangerous spot, couldn't quite beat his man. Seven forty nine left on the clock here at Cochrane Stadium on this beautiful but hot Labor Day in Bowling Green, Ohio. The Falcons leading the Wolverines two to one. A lot of great goals here today. A lot of great chances that have just gone begging as well. Falcons trying to hold on, trying to make Eli Shope's first time finish count as the winner here today. Michigan is getting closer. And that, that rapid, rapid series of plays difficult to keep up with in real time. But uh, Wagoner worked into such a dangerous position for Michigan, loops the ball over Brendan Graves, and he's beaten him. But it's Amir Didic clearing off the line, clearing the ball all the way. Um, into the scoreboard, but the danger is not over. And uh, all of a sudden, BG can break. It is, if he hits this pass, it is 1v1. Ah, Sarasso just doesn't quite have the legs, but he does track him down. He's done ever so well. And the, the referee, <laughs> I apologize for laughing on the broadcast, but uh, sometimes the calls are laughable. Uh, Sarasso judged. Uh, to have used his body to win the ball. Uh, legs, are, legs are not allowed, at least in certain moments. But just to go back, what a clear off the line from Didic. That was a beautiful attacking move from Michigan uh, that resulted in a, a great chance and a great finish. It just didn't quite find the back of the net thanks to the defender. Um, BGSU holding on here, just over six minutes left. 
Oh, Cusimano absolutely misjudged that. Leon is in, but Erlinson is able to get across with the big tackle and make the stop. Folks, if you have been with us this long, I suggest probably don't look away over the next six minutes or so, um, or maybe seven or eight or nine minutes, depending on how many times the clock has stopped here. Um, but this is going to be a good finish. There are chances at both ends. Those are tired, tired legs out there in this heat. And there is a lot happening. It is a Michigan corner kick. As the clock ticks down under five and a half. Ooh. Anthony Hernandez closes that down. And Quinn Rogers from Michigan not quite able to keep that down as the ball skies over for a goal kick. And we have stopped the clock, but presumably we'll restart it soon. Brendan Graves with the long goal kick. Shope wins the first. Trace Terry, lovely touch to Sarasso. Was trying to play 1v3, but plays in Her Hernandez, who's dancing, sees Dyson to his right. Dyson's gonna put this ball in. The Shope is there. Ooh, can't quite get on top of it. The looping header goes up. Michigan plays it quickly. Lovely pass from Hayden Evans, who's just about the man of the match for Michigan today. BGSU able to win it back. Trace Terry's gonna turn. See if he can beat him for speed. He can, and that's, that's uh, certainly we'll see a yellow here. I'm guessing it's just a yellow. We're guessing it's just a yellow. Uh, certainly, again, a professional foul. He knows what he's doing, no complaints there. As Trace Terry was in. Trace Terry has been showing off his speed today. There are some speedy Falcons out there today. Raffery <laughs> now, now brandishes the yellow. It's the right call there. No clear path. You love to see the confidence, the arrogance from Trace Terry just to size him up. You could see him slow the ball down, look around. No teammates in the immediate area. Size up the defender and say, all right, let's have a go. You and me. Let's see who wins. Turns on the burners, and he certainly wins that foot race. As we tick down, we're just over four minutes. Four more minutes in this heat. Can the Falcons hold on? Anaya over the ball. Naya delivers a searching ball that was just begging for a Falcon on the end of it. One Falcon gets a touch. I think it was Erlinson, but nobody quite on the back end of it. Hayden Evans clicks it long. Kusamano wins it in the air. Afari has called a foul here. Hmm. Erlin sent over the ball. Ooh, that's dangerous. Eli Shope shows good burst, but can't quite get to the end of it. idea over that he was well <laughs> Eli Shope called for offside 
That's uh Perhaps. Perhaps he was. Perhaps he was. Another good idea from the Falcons. Uh, Blevins just pings that ball out wide. So well done. And just cleared away by Erlens. And Trace Terry on the ball again. Oh, loses it. We'll see him track back. Yep. Blasting game does well to keep that ball inbounds. Clears the ball into the middle third. Clock is ticking down to two minutes. Two minutes left for the Wolverines to find an answer. It has been a very entertaining game here today. Such an improvement from Michigan in the second half. I think they've certainly edged the second half. Uh, chances created at both ends. Brendan Graves there. Well done to hold on to that ball. And he's going to hold this just about as long as he is allowed to. Hayden Evans with another long kick. And Michigan wins the first ball and on to the second. That is, that is a header up for grabs, but got to be just about the tallest player on BGSU. DJ is on the end of it. Trace Terry goes, goes for the, the words fail me, but it almost came off. One minute left. One minute left here at Cochran Stadium. Michigan pressing, but oh, Eli Shope. If Eli Shope had not lost his footing, it was him, him and the goalie. We have, we have fans stomping on the bleachers, begging time to go just a second faster. Ooh, a long, long teasing ball, but at the, doesn't find anyone at the end. That's gonna just about do it here. Oh, the official has, the official has stopped play. Uh, uh, this is, <laughs> well, <laughs> relatively, relatively humorous here from the official who decided that six ticks off the clock was the right number before him uh, to stop play. And hey, you know, for all I know, that's uh, maybe those are the rules. Brendan Grace kicks it long. Just 15 seconds left. Eli Shope wins the first. That's going to just about do it here, folks. This is a big win for BGSU against Michigan 2 1. A couple of great goals with Eli Shope putting the finishing kiss on an impressive performance. Your Falcons are victors 2 to 1. Please. Don't forget this weekend, Alumni Weekend for BGSU, Black Swamp Arts Festival here in Bowling Green, Ohio. We're so thankful you tuned in. We're so thankful you participated. We'll see you again soon. Thanks so much.